you know, point of the full moon is. Um, those are all out there down to a specific minute and second. Um, yeah. So you can just log all your activities. Shoot, do an EVP session during the time that, you know, that, that energy is in highest. Do you get the, a voice during that time? You know, just little things. Yeah, it, it's impressive. And it also can, you know, answer the big question of why activity mm-hmm. seems to pick up during the winter months and, and the fall months because, well, let's just face it, the moon winds up closer to the, the Earth at that time. Yeah, and you also know, it, d- during the during the winter months up here, um, and not, not so much in South Texas because it doesn't get too cold down here, but um, heat is on in their homes. They're closer together. There's more static electricity. So there's a lot yeah. of, uh, you know, energy that's caused just by humans, uh, you know, acting and behaving like they do in the colder months uh, that causes yeah. higher energy. Yeah. And, and, well, I also chalk up some of it off, well, a lot of it off is people being inside of their house more, and after a period of time, they start to go a little bit loony. <laughs> I know I do. By February of being cooped in my house, I'm like, damn, I'm hearing shit that ain't there. <laughs> <You know? laughs> do you mind yeah, February is still, it's still in the 60s here, so that's how cold that's it gets. Not here. I would love to be there when it's in the 60s. February cooping your, where, and you Coop in your house, what's that? Yeah. Oh, Jody's here. <laughs> the diva is in the house. I nice. am. I am. Nice. I just got. You, I actually just got into the house. I just walked in the house from the car. God, finally. Yeah. My so you made it home ending. safely. Huh? You made it home safely. I did. Yeah. You took a tour of the country. <laughs> <laughs> but we no, were just talking. Y'all, about, aren't y'all from Louisiana, or at least Jody? You're from Louisiana, right? I am, yeah. So you, I was actually so, just getting back into Baton Rouge. Yeah, so you know that you know your weather is you're pretty much on the same parallel as San Antonio, so you know oh, the yeah. weather I'm talking about. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, I'm I'm definitely a southern girl, and I prefer to live in the south for sure. I I, I live in New York. It's 20 degrees right now. I'm cold. <laughs> I know. You're freezing your buns off. You just. You you got to keep massaging your buns up there to keep the circulation yeah. going, you know. You got to so reach out you know, we, we want, I mean, we want to see snow. In fact, my son on his Christmas, his, he had like 20 things on his Christmas list. Oh. One of the things was, was want snow on Christmas. It's like, you don't realize oh. what people take for granted around here, or, you know, up there. Well, um, snow is good. Snow is good the first time. But once it happens once, get rid of it, get it out. Because it's not, the, the problem with snow is, it's not that people, like, where I'm from take it for granted. They really don't. They they love the snow. I love the snow personally. It's it, beautiful. It's, it's the responsibility that comes along with it that sucks. <laughs> I got to keep yeah. my driveway nice and clean. I got to make sure I, my, my walkways aren't, you know, slippery so my kids don't break their legs. And I got to keep right. it off my roof. And, you yeah, know, that's, what people around here don't, that, that's what people around here don't realize. They just see how pretty and fun it is. The minute they yeah. have to shovel the sidewalk, they're like, this sucks. I'll take the hot yeah. weather over this. It, yeah, it does suck. It does suck. It. Yeah, it's fun for time, a couple of days. I mean, yeah. yeah. If I had the time to actually enjoy it with my kids, I'd probably love it like I was a kid again. But you, you just don't. But, you know, it is what it is. But people down in San Antonio, they're not going to be able to experience, you know, going on a, a, a snowmobile and zooming across the snow at 100 no. miles an hour. You know, when I was in the sixth grade, that. when I was in the sixth grade back in 1980. Uh, January 1984 or five, I can't remember. It snowed 13 inches overnight here. It was, wow. it was a, in the town shut down. It was, I mean, for like a week, we just didn't know what to do. It, 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 there's one puddle of water on Interstate 35, and it gets below freezing, and that little puddle freezes. They'll shut down 30 miles of the interstate. And I'm not joking. Or really? Wow. No, that's, that's how it is. That's how it is here, too, Brad. I mean, I was stuck in the, uh, I mean, it was publicized all over the country last year. I was stuck in the Atlanta snowpocalypse for days, you know, yeah. and they had that on the news all over the country because nobody knows what to do. They're just not prepared. <laughs> well, I know it snowed, it snowed in Baton Rouge uh, quite a bit, a couple of times last year, didn't it? Sometimes, yeah. We get a little snow yeah. over here sometimes, but um, it's very, you know, it's unusual. You get a little frost and some flurries, and you know, it gets cold sometimes. But um, it's unusual to see very much snow. Yeah, yeah, we get we get the snow here. We we get a lot of snow here, and it's oh, uh, I know you really do. It's good in short bursts. I mean, if we can deal with short bursts and go back in the sixties, that'll be great. I would love that. 
Oh. <laughs> paranormal experiments with snow, then. Maybe it has something to do with snow in the paranormal. And you gotta be. Yeah. Oh, it's snow in the paranormal sucks. I, I've gone into, you know, you go into a lot of, you know, houses that haven't been lived in for, you know, God knows how long, 20, 30 years. And, and even to say nothing is ever shoveled out or anything for you when you get there. So, I mean, you got to trample in the shit. You got snow up to your butt. And you're like, damn, this is cold. This sucks. I hope oh, there's, there's wow. no heat in there. That's like they even got power. That's really yeah. interesting. You know, I've never really, it's so funny, I've never really had to even think about that, how, you know, snow and the paranormal, because I've always lived, you know, growing up and living in the South, that's never really been a factor for me. You know, I've been places yeah. that I've had to investigate that were, you know, very cold, but, um, you know, never any place where I had to deal with any ice or snow situations. So I, I can imagine that brings it to a whole different level. It, it does. It sucks when you got to travel through it. However, snow is water and water you know, the theory is that, you know, water fuels paranormal activity. So. Sure, sure. I mean, because, you know, it's, you know, I, I tend to believe that spirits can travel on water. You know, it's, um, it's conductive to that. I don't, know if it's, I don't know if it's 100% true, though, yet. I don't, I, I don't, I don't think anyone's actually putting it to the test. I just think they hear it and said, okay, that's what it is. That's what happened. I don't think anyone's actually well, ran tests it. It's all about the flow, you know, the flow of the energy and, and the theory you know, that the energy is there is what it's really about. Yeah. I'm going to have to test it. That's all. I'm going to run experiments. I love, I love it when you do it. I love that. I love, I love it when you set up a science test. I do. All the time. <laughs> I know you do. And then at the end of the science test, I want to pissing off a lot of people because everything that they saw, everything that they believed comes to a screeching halt. And it's like, <laughs> man, not what I expected. Yeah, <laughs> we, did a, we did a big... We did a big water one near you, Jody, at uh, Nottaway Plantation in um, oh, okay. White Castle. White Castle, not too far from me. And, yeah. you know, the Mississippi River comes right up to that place. And we were looking at it. We were like, man, it was just a wide stretch. It was turbulent. It was dirty, um, you know, muddy. And mm-hmm. you know, we, we just knew power was thrown off of that. And sure enough, that the only place at Nottaway Plantation that had a haunting or that they had reports was on the third floor. And the third floor was the only part of the house that was above the levee exposed to the river. So yeah. we did a lot of experiments with, you know, doing line mm-hmm. of sight of EMF to the, you know, to the third floor. And, you know, sure mm-hmm. enough, we mapped out that that stuff is coming off that river, uh, you know, quite a bit. That's really interesting. That's cool. Good. Yeah. That's good. That's actually fantastic. That's one thing that I always oh. loved about Ghost Lab and watching Ghost Lab was literally you were the only show that, that brought in experimental procedures in, in, into your investigation. Oh, yeah. I love that about it. It was yeah. fun. Like I told you earlier, it's, it, it, if nothing else, it broke the monotony. It's, it's like we, we came in, we, we we just explored the place. We may have got a one or two bits of pieces of evidence, or maybe we went off of what the claims were. We sat and thought about it and said, you know, what could we do? What 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 kind of basic scientific principle are we looking at? Because – you know, until you relate this stuff to what you know, then yeah. that's where it just blows people's minds. And it, it's been amazing yeah. over the years to, to you know, stand up in, in, in front of college students and, and, and uh, professional associations. I mean, I go speak uh, to doctors and scientists all the time and talk about this stuff. And when they mm-hmm. leave the room, they're like, wow, I really never thought of it like that. But when I do think of it like that, it's plausible. Yeah. Right, because you've done the research. You've put in the time conducting these experiments, trying to prove or disprove the way that something may or may not work. And, you know, it gives, you know, the credibility to it. It also makes people right. feel a little bit better when mm-hmm. they're not, when, when they when they feel like, well, i got a haunting in my house. Well, the haunting is because it's, it's a natural occurrence. It's not a natural occurrence that you can explain away with something. This is actually the the retained energy spirit of someone it's 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 uh you know to the old residual or intelligent and that whole thing but you know it is something like that but something's powering it and this is just natural and it happens all across the world so you know nothing to be scared of you know unless uh right it, it's coming at you with horns and and breathing <laughs> fire out of its mouth or something like that but i've never come across that case yet no, we Jason and I have neither one of us have ever come across that case either. We say that all the time. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm not big on that. <laughs> otherwise, yeah. otherwise, otherwise.
otherwise, you know, Jay, I'm going to look at you and I'm going to say, dude, run, you know. There's people out there all the time. It's like I, I see Facebook posts and, you know, read little blogs, and it's like every investigation they go to, that's how it ends up being, you know. It's like crosses flying off the walls, and it's like, man, yeah. I want to see I, it. So do I. I, I, I mean, I, I don't know how long you've been doing it, but I've been almost 20 years. I've been, I, I don't want to say a researcher back, because I'm sure you can agree with me, back in the 80s and the 90s, there was no such thing as a researcher. There was a guy going out hoping to get some kind of something from, from something they can't say. Just checking shit uh, out. Yeah. Pretty much, pretty much. It wasn't researching. Uh, they they didn't really have a, checking it out. There wasn't no yeah. gadgets that they have today or anything like that. We mm. used basically whatever we could find. And a lot of it was, uh, you know, uh, geyser counters and compasses and um, – Mining rods. I, I, I had some rods. Yeah, I mean – But yeah. I've never seen anything fly off a wall. I had a K2 meter fall off a ledge once. <laughs> Um, I, I wouldn't say it was a ghost because it didn't fly. It didn't shoot, you know, right at me, or it just kind of fell off. What yeah, no, I have, I have, I mean, admittedly, I've seen uh, on one occasion, this was an investigation that we did way before we had the, the TV show, Little House in San Antonio. Um, just, you know, little unassuming house in a regular neighborhood built in the 70s or whatever. And uh, the, the, the woman there, it was, she was claiming to see this person. She was having problems or whatever. So we went in there, and we're all sitting around on the couch. We got our feet up on the lazy boy. Cameras and everything are going. And she had a patio door that went out to the to the backyard, and it had those you know those plastic vertical blinds that hang down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It had it had those, and all of a sudden those blinds just start flipping around like the like the Tasmanian devil is in it, just going crazy. And wow. Barry, me and me, and Barry and, and uh, Hector, another guy on our team, we were sitting there staring at it, and we were stunned. It was one of those things where we—I don't know—it's almost like a dream. Am I really witnessing this happen? And just at that moment, one of the cameras goes flying off the bookshelf. We're diving just to try to, you know, catch it so it doesn't break. And that thing just went off for about 15 seconds, and we—we we were just. It wouldn't happen to just blows you away. Your mouth is right on the floor just going, what in the hell is that? What just happened? No explanation. No tax. No, no one was there. There's no way that could have happened. Yeah. I've only had the issue with the KG meter once. And, and like I said, it didn't really fly. It just kind of dropped off. I don't know why. I don't know if it was some unseen force that kind of pushed it off or Whatever it could have been, it could have been just because it wasn't placed on there right. But it sat there for about a good five, ten minutes before it fell off. So, I mean, that's the only thing that kind of questions me is it being something natural. Right. Yeah. Who knows? What could it, some vibration that could have maybe possibly caused that. Yeah. I don't know. But I'm not big on the – I don't know. I, I, have you ever been uh, into a, a case where the client claimed there was some kind of demon inside of there? Well, they 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 don't usually say demon. They say it seems demonic. You know, they never say demon, but when they say demonic, it's like, okay, so what's happening? Oh, you know, I'm getting pushed, or I get, you know, whatever. And it's like, just because that happens doesn't mean it's demonic. It just, yeah. you know, that's just what the phenomena happens to be. You know, because I've felt it before. I've I've been, you know I've, I've been hit. I I know what that feels like. So. um you know, but I'm not sitting there saying the devil did it every single time. It's I always say, hey, if I was an intelligent spirit and I'm trying to get your attention, and the only way I can do it is to punch you in the face, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to punch oh, you in yeah. the face. I agree. I agree. I mean, I've been pushed. I've been shoved. I've had a buddy of mine get scratched once. Um, but I, I, I never I, – I, I'm the last guy to say anything a demon. Last guy. But I agree with you. I mean – these entities, people got to keep in mind that they've been watching people pass their, their lives every day for God knows how long, five years, a thousand years. Who the hell knows? They've been, you know, watching life pass them. And, and after a while, they're going to say, hey, you know what? I want to jump in on this conversation. I want to have coffee with them. So they're going to do what they can to get your attention and say, hey, you know, pay me some attention. Pay me. And, and yeah, they might smack you on the ass or smack you on the face or touch you or the, <laughs> the logical thing. They, they're going to scratch you, which is... <laughs> Another thing that I'm tired of really hearing, even though it happened to my buddy, it does happen, don't get me wrong, but 
you know, it people they, they get a scratch and it's like, oh my God, it's three scratches, it's a demon. It's like, no, it's not. You Why does it always happen? No. 